Hi, this is Bruce Hornack, and this is part two in the three-part series on the restoration of this Remington Model 24 Semi-Automatic 22. Part one was about the de-rusting and re-bluing of the metal components, like the barrel and the receiver, but this video is about refinishing the buttstock and the forend using Minwax wipe-on polyurethane. After the demonstration, I will discuss what I would have done different had I to do it all over again. I still would have used the Minwax polyurethane, but I would have chosen either to use the spray finish, which is available in rattle cans, or continue to use the wipe-on finish, but this time over a sanding sealer. I will discuss why I chose not to use those techniques when I first got started, but why I have reconsidered. But for now, let's get started and watch the demonstration. Fortunately, the buttstock and the forend were not as in bad a shape as the rusty barrel and receiver. There was definitely some staining around the head of the buttstock where it connects to the receiver, and there was some staining on the side of the buttstock that were easily removed with acetone. Likewise, with the forend, there was some staining next to the barrel that I was also able to remove with acetone. I could see there was so little finish left on the stock. The fastest way to get the bulk of the finish off was to use an orbital sander with 320 grit. Hand sanding was required in the contoured areas. This is what the buttstock looked like after soaking the head in acetone for one hour, removing the last of the previous finish, but before blowing out the sawdust from the grain. Before applying the finish, I wanted to throw together a cradle to allow me to elevate and spin the stock horizontally. A couple of pieces of scrap and a few half-inch dowels did the trick. Adding a hook in the end of the dowels gave me a handle and a way of hanging the stock for drying. These were spacers I just happened to have laying around, but you can cut spacers out of half-inch PVC pipe. Over the years, I can't tell you how many wire hangers I have repurposed for hanging materials to my fluorescent fixtures to dry. I use these blue shop towels I buy at Home Depot to use as my applicator. This was the way I applied every coat of sealer on the forend and the buttstock. This is coat number six, coat number eight, coat number 11, buffing out coat number 20, coat number 22, a fully buffed out coat number 24, applying the final coat Number 25. Coat 25 is not 100%, but I decided it was good enough for now. After going through the ordeal of putting on 25 coats of wipe-on polyurethane, I wanted to find an alternative that would require fewer coats. Using a sanding sealer was certainly an alternative I had originally considered, but chose not to. I chose not to because the last time I used sanding sealers, which was like 40 years ago, I didn't like the way they milked up the natural colors of the wood. But more importantly, I couldn't get a definitive answer from Minwax which of their sanding sealers were going to be compatible with the oil-based wipe-on polyurethane. As it turned out, after I had already started putting the polyurethane on the gun stock, Lowe's began carrying a sanding sealer in the quart size that said right on the label that it was compatible with all of their water-based and oil-based polyurethane products. But it also warned not to sandwich their sanding sealer between coats of polyurethane. As for the reason I chose not to spray the finish, number one, I had no idea that the wipe-on was going to require 25 coats. Also, none of the YouTube contributors recommended using a spray finish. They all used some form of wipe-on finish, but none indicated it would take 25 coats. After refinishing my gun stock, I decided to conduct an experiment involving four different refinishing techniques. The goal was to determine which would result in the best finish with the least number of coats. So I bought a piece of walnut large enough to demonstrate the results on four separate panels. 
The first sample used the same process I used in the demonstration to see if it would still require 25 coats of the wipe-on poly. The second sample used a sanding sealer first with a wipe-on poly as top coats. The third sample used a sanding sealer with a spray finish over the top. And the fourth sample used a spray finish only with no sanding sealer. All used Minwax products. It's important to point out there was a difference in drying times between the spray and the wipe-on finishes. The wipe-on only required three hours between recoats. The spray required three days. Although the spray was thicker than the wipe-on, with a ratio of about eight coats of wipe-on for every one coat of spray, the difference in the drying times resulted in completion times that were about the same number of days. It's just that with the spray, which required far fewer coats, was a lot less work, and the results were far superior to the wipe-on finish. Let's look at the four results. This sample currently has 20 coats of wipe-on poly without sanding sealer. I would estimate it would take at least another five coats to completely fill the grain, so this is consistent with the coats that were used in the demonstration. This required about 12 days, averaging two coats per day. This sample also has 20 coats, but this time over a sanding sealer. I estimate it would take another two coats to completely seal the pores. Not much different than the first sample, except the surface does look flatter, but as you will see, not as flat as the spray finishes. This also required 12 days, averaging two coats per day. This sample used a sanding sealer with one coat of spray, then seven coats of wipe-on poly over the spray. Flatter than the previous two with good depth and luster, but still with some porosity. Still took 12 days, but with only 10 coats, and required a lot less work. This sample has no sanding sealer, but three coats of spray and four coats of wipe-on poly over the spray. This is by far the best result. A flat surface with good depth and luster and no porosity. This took seven coats and six days. This was the best result the least work and the fastest completion time. One thing is for sure, if I were going to do this again, I would most likely spray the finish with no sanding sealer. But if I were going to do a wipe on finish, I would absolutely use a sanding sealer, not because it would result in fewer coats, but because it would result in a flatter surface. It could be that none of the YouTube contributors used a spray finish because spraying does require a lot of prior experience. It does free environment and far more dangerous to breathe. But I can assure you that all gun manufacturers use spray finishes because they can be automated with computer controls. If you decide that you want to refinish your gun stock properly done, a wipe on finish can be done with little risk, far less experience than a spray finish, and can achieve a really wonderful result. I hope you have found this video helpful. If you are interested in restoring this model firearm and plan to break it down, you can find in-depth demonstrations on the barrel takedown adjustment, trigger and receiver disassembly, and de-resting the metal components using electrolysis, all in part three of this series. Just go to my YouTube channel at Bruce Hornack. Thanks for watching.